So first, introduce yourself. Okay. Hi, I'm Heidi Jube. I'm an artist who lives in St. Joseph, Minnesota. Um, abstract painter, bookbinder, and public artist. And then I moved away from the cities. Okay, so bookbinding was a, a totally different thing. Like, I could learn the methods, I could get the instructions, I could take the knowledge. It was more apprentice-based yeah. in a way that I could take that wherever I went. So when I moved, I left school, I moved to Greater Minnesota, I didn't have the, um, I didn't have the paper making capabilities, um, didn't have printmaking access. Right. Um, bookbinding was the only thing that I could really do where I could buy the materials. I already had some of them, some, some of them, but I could buy the materials and start developing my skills because we know it's about skill first then you build your practice with experience but that skill needs to be solid nobody told me that <laughs> um, college didn't tell you that but i now look back on it and realize that i was being really hard on myself because i didn't have you know i did, just didn't know what my voice was what was i trying to say with this art form you know right. but when i um started working for an arts organization um, where they need arts ed, ed classes, I did teach bookbinding. And so then I became very good at not only teaching it, but doing it. Um, and then I, as I did the more research, I understood the relationships of specialization in the book. And so mine is in the spine. I create a solid spine on a book. Um, I choose design elements, but I keep it really simple. Um, I have letterpress artists and printmakers that do the other parts. Um, and so I learned that I didn't have to be a jack of all trades to make it work. Right. I needed to just become really good at my part. Right. Um, so I, start, I, I did for a while use it as my expression. Um, there are some pieces that I did back in 2011, 10, 11, 12. Um, because it was nice and portable. I had young kids at the time, so it was nice to be able to do a piece, seal it up, put it away, um, get out of the way. Um, I wasn't doing large-scale paintings at that point very much. I did a little bit of it. Um, but then once I started having a studio practice using painting as my medium and public art, the bookbinding became just more of a gift to myself and right. uh, the, the ability to practice something that I can, I can, uh, I do know how long it takes. Right. It, unlike that jazz composition of a painting. Right. Where I don't know when it's going to ever end. At least with a book, I know it takes me two hours to do it, you know, from beginning to end. And then I have a journal for whatever, or a sketchbook that I made that I know the papers, what they're going to do. It's predictable. Yeah. Um, so, um, it's not wasted talent at, right. at all. I, and actually I know you have a, a binder over here, a binder here in town, and I, um, so recently, during this whole COVID thing, um, my book practice had to just make its way back into my life and be like, okay, well, I can paint, yes, I can, I can't, I can't do some of my public art projects um, that I had in the hopper, um, I can't do a lot of, well, gallery shows and stuff was um, uncertain at the time that I made this decision. Right. And um, so I, I was like, well, I'm going to start doing some binding. I ended up, you know, um, having some people um, ask me to do some special books for them. And so the idea of doing the surgery on the book is really kind of therapeutic right now, um, where I take away the old crustiness and then just put, give it new agility. Right. Um, it, it's been kind of nice to, to reintroduce myself to that. I think, well, I, I ended up out of college. I, I started working with a gallery in Minneapolis called Rogue Buddha Gallery. Yeah. Um, he's an old friend of mine. Uh, well, we were, he was like one of two friends I had at the University of Minnesota because it was so big. Right. And um, so Nick Harper was my buddy and, and we, um, I, rented, I rented the basement studio I don't think I created any decent work out of that period of my life. It was all really bad. Right. Um, I mean, we both kind of joke about anything we created back in those days. Right. Because um, it was a party. I'm not going to lie. Um, but. Well, you got however, out of your system. 
Yeah, we had to figure things out. Yeah. We were still young and... I always said, you know, you sow your wild oats and then yeah, you come Yeah, here. yeah, and we really needed to figure out a lot of things. And he did figure it out. I mean, the fact that he's one of the few galleries still standing. Right. And now, right now we're in another uh, a questionable time, but he made it through a lot of things. And so um, we, we were really innovative back then, and that was before the internet, otherwise, other than an email blast. Yeah. I mean, that was the only thing we could do back then. Right. And, um, and so I learned a lot about the for-profit gallery at that point um, and the struggles in that. Um, and then I ended up just immersing myself in the for the nonprofit arts world. I think that the work that I did in nonprofit work distracted me from creating work at the, a certain point in my life. Um, so, but 2012 when did, when did, was when I really pushed it. Yep. Um, I the worst that helped. Oh. Wow. Um, I well, because I didn't have that pressure, and so I I then stuck to the my guns and started creating work regularly, realizing that this is my, this is why I'm what I'm supposed to do with my life. This right. is not, this is not a hobby. This is not something that just makes me happy. Actually, it didn't make me happy. There, that was not the initial feeling when I made work. I felt relieved. I felt listened to by my canvas, or I felt like I let something out. It was like a workout almost, like an adren adrenaline went out onto the canvas, but it wasn't like this is, you know, oh, so pleasant because I was going through a lot of pain. Right. So, so, but I became more insistent of honoring that work because, you know, there's, there was nothing in my path besides a few quiet cheerleaders that were saying, do it. Right. This is awesome. All the artists make all the money, you know, like, we're so proud of you. They were a lot of concern, like, how are you going to do that? You know, so, so my in intuition was the one that was pushing me to do it. Right. If there was something I was responding to, I was doing it from my gut. I wasn't responding because this will make all the money. Right. So I, I think that's where the practice happened and then where it developed. Okay. So my practice, on the other hand is I have to break it up into chunks because I am still a mother of three. Right. And so I had to teach them during the day. I did not have the energy to look at anything after five. I, um, yeah, my, my, my face hurt. My eyes hurt. I think when you're on Zoom and smiling, it, you don't have those muscles. I realized <laughs> I probably don't smile that much in real life like I thought. Right. Um, and then I'd have like a, light so that people can see my face and then I realized that hurts. So I realized that I was I was exhausting myself, but I did I for the first time have addressed my weekends as being valuable. You know? So I'll use my weekends to develop at least another piece. I don't I yeah, so I mean if and then if I'm and then if I create a regimen along an idea, then then that becomes the series. Um, but I think I am very much interrupted right now. I'm not concerned. It's, it's working. It's fine. Um, if I go a little crazy, then the people who love me will say, get to the studio now and get out of our face, you know? So I know that there's, I need the mental and emotional outlet of the studio. So right now I'm working on cardboard. I didn't Cardboard. Yeah, I'm using, I'm repurposing, um, I'm just using them as canvases, but they're um, dividers from a brewery, um, brewery, where they do the crawlers. Yeah. And they, they decide to get rid of the growlers during COVID and just do the smaller cans. And so I walked in once to buy my crawlers. And um, they had these big sheets of cardboard, and they were maybe a little bit bigger than these canvases. And I was like, can I have a couple of those? I just felt like painting that weekend and mm -hmm. couldn't go to the store, the art supply store, to pick up my stuff. And so they were like, yeah, go ahead. And I'm like, and then I did two paintings on it. And I'm like, I loved it. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I have an artist friend of mine who died a few years ago, and he's Hungarian. And he painted on cardboard one self-portrait 
that he gave me that ended up being amazing. And, um, and he did it back in the 50s. And it's in really decent condition, considering. And um, all I did, and, and I, was, I decided to get it framed, obviously, because framing helps protect the artwork. And I realized it's going to last so long. You know, as if it doesn't have access to air, water, right. and sunlight, we're good. Right. And so I decided I'm just gonna do that. And so are you gessoing on the? On the I page? didn't gesso it. Oh. No. All I did was I um I, I stretched it. I I did secure it down while I was working on it. Yeah. It does loosen up a little bit um, while it's wet, but it will dry flat and um. I mean, I think if I added way too much paint, like some of these have a lot of paint on them, yeah. I think it would crack and buckle, but right. um, I only do like a one to two hour painting session on it, and I'm very active when I paint, so I decided that that's okay. And I and then I write notes of what I was thinking about, who did I talk to, all of these different things around each piece. That's a work that I, I want to keep going on, because right now it's about relationships and when you're removed from people there's a there's a tension there that is like oh I don't see the people I care about but then when I have a conversation I'm like I want to document that conversation yeah other than zoom right you know well thanks for the download you know that's not <laughs> the same thing it's the it's the energy I got it that I don't care what we talked about right it's just that I I got some energy to create something and so 